worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. to you this third Sunday after Pentecost. 
God, as we come on this third Sunday after Pentecost, our minds are still on that day. That day when the Spirit came like it had never come before is an unforgettable day for us. God, it's on that day that when the Spirit came, God, your church was born. On that day when the Spirit came, they heard something sounding like a Russian mighty wind. On that day, God, they heard people of all vernacular speaking sound like power, words of power coming from the lips of your people. This morning, God, as we congregate in our virtual space to worship you, to hear a word from heaven, God, somebody need a word of power. We pray right now, God, that you will uh, allow your servant to be used to speak words of power to your people, God. Help your servant to speak words that causes fear to be blown aside. Cause your servant to speak words this morning, God, that will cause their hearts to be stronger. Cause your servant to speak words, God, that will cause your people to think of dreams, to look for signs, visions, and wonders in their lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen.
this morning as we come. I'd like to call attention to Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 24. Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 24. That text reads this way in the New International Version of the Bible. All the trees of the forest will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall. I dry up green tree and make the dry tree flourish. From these words, I want to preach this morning from the subject, your comeback story, your comeback story, your comeback story. The prophet Ezekiel did ministry in a time that is very similar to the moment we are going through right now. Right now, we are going through a moment where the talk is about coming back out of this COVID pandemic, coming back out of a year of social distancing. That's what we are talking about. Ezekiel's people had their comeback conversation. Ezekiel's people in Ezekiel 17 were people who had their moment where they could not live life like they wanted to. They had their moment when they could not worship in the house of God like they wanted to. They had their moment where they could not visit with family like they wanted to. Yes, they had their moments, moments which were all similar to the moments we are going through right now. They had their moments, y'all, when they could not spend money like they wanted to. They had their moments when life for them was put on the back burner. Again, I say, yes, they had their moments. In the midst of Ezekiel's people having moments similar to our moments, Ezekiel's people had questions. They had questions about making a comeback. They wondered if they could ever come back to the land that they called home. They wondered if life, like it used to be, could return again. The signal had been sent about the possibility of an early comeback. When I say an early comeback, I mean some of Ezekiel's people thought they would never get out of captivity in Babylon. But prophets like Ezekiel, as they showed up, they showed up not just with a word that burned and burned and burned, but they showed up with a word about God's people and Ezekiel's people making a comeback. And so as Ezekiel's people were contemplating making a comeback out of Babylon, and making a comeback out of captivity. They had their question, their question about, can we make this comeback? It's been so long. Is a comeback even in view for us? That's where Ezekiel's people was. Not only were Ezekiel's people questioning their capacity to come back. 
But Ezekiel's people were wondering about the data. They were wondering about what their comeback data was going to look like. Would the data say if they make a comeback? Would it say that they are more hopeful after they made the comeback than they were before the comeback? They wondered if the data would say if they are more happier as they made a comeback rather than they were before they made a comeback. They wondered if the data would say their comeback story was the right thing for them. And so, my brothers and my sisters, Ezekiel's people had their own questions back in the day. They had their questions about what their comeback was going to look like. In the midst of having their questions, the Lord had the prophet Ezekiel to speak to Ezekiel's people. Ezekiel, my brothers and my sisters, spoke in parables. He spoke in a short parable as his people were contemplating, can we make a comeback? Can we go back to the land we called ours? They contemplated their comeback. God had Ezekiel to speak to them. And Ezekiel said in a parable, all the trees of the forest will know that I, the Lord, I bring down tall trees. I, the Lord, make the low trees grow tall. I dry up the green trees, and I make the dry tree flourish. You all don't know it, but them shouting words right there, because God was trying to help Ezekiel help his people see what their comeback story could look like and would look like. What God was saying through Ezekiel to tell his people is that Ezekiel, uh, you tell them that they don't have to worry about their comeback story. If they incorporate me in their story, I will help shape their comeback. All the stuff that they are worrying about right now, I can put it into focus and shape things up. I can shape them up. I can shape their families up. I can shape their optimism up. I can shape their view of the future up. I can shape up whatever needs to be shaped up. I can shape up their feelings of worries. I can shape up what their economy is going to look like. I can shape up what their work environment is going to look like. I can shape up what their health is going to look like. Whatever they need shape up, I can shape it up. For I am a God who can shape up a small tree to become a big tree. I am a God who can shape up a tall tree to become a small tree. I am a God who can shape up a green tree to become a dry tree. I am a God who can shape up a dry tree to flourish in a time of making a comeback. I don't know if y'all got it yet, 
But what God was saying through Ezekiel was, Ezekiel, you're dealing with some pessimistic folk. You're dealing with some folk who don't have what President Obama talked about in his interview the other day. Obama said, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that always try to have some hope. Ezekiel's people, as they wondered about what their comeback was going to look like, they wondered, Lord have mercy, if things were going to be like they were in captivity. They wondered if they came back small, would they always be small? They wondered if they came back dried up. Will life for them be dried up always? They wondered if life wasn't working for them as they tried to make a comeback. If it would always be that way. And God is saying through the prophet, no, it won't always be be that way for I God am a shaping things up God I wish I had a few folk this morning who knows that God is a God who can shape up our stories our stories of being where we don't want to be we can come back for that. Our stories of making mistakes, we can come back from that. Our stories of being on the bottom, we can come back from that. Our story of losing a job, we can come back from that. Our story of going through ups and downs, and all around we can come back from that our story of not knowing what our story in the future is going to be like if it's bad or pessimistic we can come back from that and so my brothers and my sisters as we stand here as we sit here as we watch for our moment of making our comeback, I want you to know there are some folk who are not optimistic about our future. Can't you hear them saying that a recession is on the way? Can't you hear them saying things gonna go up? Can't you hear them saying it won't be like it used to be? Can't you hear them saying you will pay more just to make it? But I can hear a God who can shape things up. I hear a God who can shape our future. I hear a God who knows about our Damara saying to us through this parable the same way I made a small tree big I can cause big things to happen in your life the same way the same way I made a dry up tree flourish I can make you flourish yes the pessimists are out there trying to help us understand what the story is gonna be but our story don't have to be the story that the pessimistic folks say they will be Can I tell you what they are saying right now? And I'll take my seat. They out there talking, talking about how 
as in the month of June, we come out of this pandemic, they are talking about how a recession is on the way. They are talking about how we haven't seen a recession in 10 years. They are talking about how everything is going to go up and up and up. But I don't want to talk about the pessimistic folk. I want to talk about an optimistic God. I want to talk about a God who can make small things big as God want them to be. I want to talk about a God who can make a dried up tree grow some leaves. Somebody ought to shout, yeah. So what that means to you and I is that come what may, God will find a way to help us make it. God can shape our story such that our story is not a story about doing small things. Our story can be a story of how God enabled us as we came back out of a pandemic to be big, do big things. May have started our comeback doing small things. But the Lord, I said the Lord can help us do big things when God talks about making a dry tree flourish. That was God's way of saying, I can help somebody who don't do big things normally. Do big things every day of your life coming out of a pandemic, but you can do big things, yeah. Big things like pay your bills, big things like making it. When there isn't a stimulus check on the horizon, big things like paying your light bill, big things like paying your water bill, big things, big things like paying your phone bill. When you're a wondering, how am I gonna make it when we get where I, Ezekiel's people were? God can cause us to make a comeback. Prices may rise, but the Lord will help us do big things in the midst of a recession. God, yes, God can cause us to do big things when pessimistic folk can't see nothing but little things. Ain't he all right? Ain't the Lord good? God can help us do big things. Our comeback story in the month of June can be a story of how I thought I could only get the small things done in life. But God is helping me do the big things. Helping me pay that big bill I didn't know I could pay. Helping me do big things. Helping my family do big things. Helping everybody connected to me do big things. Yes, you can do big things at a time when the data say only the little things can happen. Big things will happen. It is now time in worship 
For those of you who would like to come and give your life to the Lord in your virtual space, I ask that you stand on your feet wherever you are and say, Lord, I give myself away to you so you can use me. For saying that, I want you to know the Lord will grant your petition. The Lord will take you in, but then the Lord will change your outlook, your outlook about who you are and what you can do, be, be small, but God can turn it into an outlook of hope and big things happening. May the Lord bless you. And as we look towards returning to in-person worship on next week, I pray you've received a word of power this morning. Amen. And now the benediction. May God's grace, God's peace, God's capacity to do big things as we make our comeback. May it be with us not just today on this third Sunday of Pentecost. May it be with us now, henceforth, and forevermore.
demand. 